Okay, so for day two of the class, some of the goals that we have are we're going to uh, talk about creating a company profile uh, and setting up webmaster tools. So when we talked last time, um, I made notes in a notepad file, and I'm going to give you these notes also at the end of the day. So if you'd like to take your own notes, uh, you can do so, and I'll, I'll be taking notes. So... So what I would have here is SEO plus SEM could equal success. And we talked last time SEO, search engine optimization, SEM, search engine marketing. We're going to be engaging in both. Now, very simple definition, but what, what did I say last week was the difference between SEO and SEM? Anyone remember? Close. Both of them are going to be online, uh, but what SEO is what you do. Or yes, go ahead. Yes, I was going more for that. SEO is what you do on site and then off site. Uh, both of them are online in, in terms of them being, you know, digital. But on site is what are you doing on your website? What am I doing on, you know, Victor.com to get traffic, and then. Off-site, what am I doing on Facebook, or what am I doing on Twitter, what am I doing off-site? Uh, those are the things we'll be covering both in the class, uh, on the site and off the site. Last time we talked about long tail keyword strategy. So it has a big fancy name, and I gave a definition, and I drew a picture about it, but what would you say in your words? Uh, what what's a long tail keyword strategy? Plain language searches. Say that again. Plain language searches. Uh, plain language searches. Um, that's that's. Yes, yeah, so that that's one way also. But uh, we could do um, detailed search terms. So old way, new way, old way is just Italian restaurant. Let's say I have a restaurant, I want to get found, it's an Italian food restaurant. Um, the old way, people would have used just these simple keywords, and nowadays they would, look, they would search more for something like authentic Italian food restaurant in Hillcrest you know something more detailed that's the long tail keyword strategy basically and it does relate to the natural language search in that I showed last week that well if I ask my phone like a regular sentence like a person it would understand um, that sort of term and try to give me a result so that was the long tail keyword strategy because it is more detailed everyone's Everyone that knows the old way is doing this way, very basic keywords, or putting those basic keywords on their site. Well, the long tail keyword, not everyone, is an uh, is a Italian food restaurant in Hillcrest, or purport to themselves to be authentic. So the more detailed it is, this is the long tail keyword strategy. And lastly, last time what we also did was the competitor analysis. And competitor analysis was using public resources to find out about competitors. There are other Italian food restaurants out there and I'm competing with them so I need to know as much as I can about them I need to research them I need to um, find out what kind of website do they have are they on Facebook uh, how uh, often do they tweet on Twitter and do they have um, a modern website what do they have on their website what do I like about it what don't I like about it 
So we, we did a little bit of that over the, week, uh, over the, the last time. Um, over the weekend, did any of you try uh, any of this stuff on your own? Did you do any competitor analysis or kind of think about long tail keywords and such? Anyone? 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 Okay, minus 10 points for everyone. Uh, <laughs> you need to uh, think about that as well and, and do it. Yes? On the competitor analysis, is there a, a set number of competitors you should look at, like a half a dozen or a dozen? Or it's as many as you think is valuable to you. If we were doing this, as I said, I, I teach this, and I'm also part of a company that we do this. When we do this for a client, we usually do three uh, to five. Uh, you don't need a huge amount. You could research as many as you want, six or a dozen or whatever. But uh, depending on, the, on your particular company, three might be enough. Or not enough. Maybe I'm yet another, uh, you know, lawyer, so I need to um, do some more research. But maybe in my space, uh, there aren't that many bakeries in my area, so uh, I only need to do three or so. So you can say here, as many as you feel are helpful. Three to six plus. Three to five plus. So the competitor analysis will help you determine your long tail keyword strategy. Plus more things we'll talk about. Uh, just by doing this doesn't mean you'll automatically get this. Just by doing the analysis doesn't mean you'll get the keywords. It will help you because it will show you these companies over here are using these keywords and they're successful and I'm not. Maybe I should use those keywords as you look at the competition and you see they use certain terms and certain keywords you might then figure out well these are synonyms these are related words that I might want to use to stay ahead of the competition they're not using these keywords so this is a distillation of what we did uh, last time the details are in the um, are in the network folder so let me remind you especially if you're new uh, this week. These notes that I'm writing and other documents I will give you on the network folder. Let me show you where the network folder is. If you were here last week, I'll remind you where the network folder is, but if, you were, if you're new this week, here's the network folder. You want to go to, uh, on your computer, go to the desktop, double-click on computer on the top left, and then you'll see a section of network location, double-click on classroom data, drive Z, Z as in zebra, Z, open up classroom data. And then you'll find our folder in here, Campos SEO. Open that folder. And this is where, if you were not here last week, you can get the syllabus. My email is right there. This is where I'm also uh, putting my notes at the end of the day. Uh, I will put my notes that I'm writing in there. The notes from last week are there, 2018-0504. Uh, the long tail keyword strategy document is right there. Syllabus, um, the competitor analysis, uh, the competitor analysis that example that I created is right there based on the original company profile, handout, the drawing of the long tail keyword strategy, and the student code of conduct. Uh, those are the, the rules of the class that uh, uh, I talked about last time. So I'm going to put these notes, when I'm finished with them, at the end of the day, I'll put them in there as well. And at the moment, the printer is off, uh, so you can print a little bit later, just because the printer is noisy and distracting during the lecture. I couldn't see the competitor on Oh, OK. Let's... No? No, no, another, another uh, folder. OK, OK. Wrong folder. <laughs> Yes, so um, the, these documents, uh, you can uh, email them to yourself, or you can send me an email and I'll send them to you. And also, as I said, the, um, the videos that I'm recording, um, you, you can request them. My email's in the syllabus, but just to remind you, my email is vcampos at sdccd.edu, and then you can uh, email me for videos. Now, um, as I said last week, 
uh, the reason that it's that the videos are not mentioned in the syllabus and such is because these videos are not official school material. They're not edited for content, they're not copyrighted, they're not captioned, and that sort of thing. They're not prepared for an educational environment. I just turn on the recorder, I record what I'm doing, and then I upload it at the end of the class. I don't go back and fix my mistakes. I don't go back and remove the part where I uh, helped someone for you know uh, two minutes and the screen is empty. Um, I just uh, upload them as is. But the good thing is that you can uh, watch the videos whenever you want, rewind them, fast forward them, and the videos will still be there even after the class ends. Uh, you just have to request the link to the videos. So you can uh, do that through my email. Okay, so for today, this was from last time. And uh, today, our goals are company profile and webmaster tools. This is a, what we'll be covering today. So let's look at it in, the, in this term first, and then we'll see how it applies to you. As I said before, I teach this, but I'm also part of a company that we do this for a client. So if a client hired us uh, to make them a website, or do SEO for them, or do social media for them, we need to know as much as we can about the company to do a good job for them on Facebook or on blogging or on videos or whatever. We need to know about the company. So company profile is to help define the scope of the company that will be uh, optimized. SEO optimized. Um, this is to help define various aspects of the company used for long tail keywords and devising, I spell devising, devising, devising strategy for online marketing. The more um, you know about your company and have it uh, spelled out, the easier it will be to engage in uh, these aspects of SEO and SEM. So if my company were hired uh, to run their Twitter account, well, we have to create tweets. We have to create content. On social media we have to tweet on behalf of their company so we need to know about their company um, we need to know how their um, how do you call it their um, their speech or their their language is uh, do they use slang or proper terms we need to know a little bit about their history uh, to give us ideas of what to create, what kind of pictures. This kind of picture doesn't fit with this company. It's too fun or frivolous. Or this picture is not fun or frivolous enough for the company. So if we were being hired, we would create a company profile to figure out more about the company so that we can uh, do a good job for them. For yourself, it's also very useful because you need to know these various aspects of your own company to help do the self-promotion. So it'll make more sense once I give you the document. I'm going to put into the network folder the company, uh, the company profile document. Oh, I already put it there. So company client, company profile. Actually, now that I look there, it's missing the. Oh, never mind. Uh, okay, so. I put in here the client company profile. Go ahead and copy that to your desktop. Just drag it out of the folder. Don't double click it. From the fo from my network folder, you need to copy it to your folder, your desktop. If you bought a USB drive, you should plug that in, and uh, you can get a copy of this client company profile. We'll open it up. We'll look at it. Again, the, the printer is off at the moment, 
And anyway, I wouldn't really want you to print this. This is a Word document that you can write in directly instead of printing. So uh, copy that client company profile, and let's open it up and take a look at it. Okay, so this is uh, set up sort of like an assignment, but it's not an assignment. Like I said, in this class, there are no assignments. There are no grades and such. But it's set up in a way that there's this cover page where you would put your company name. This is going to be the company profile of your company and your name, and then a date. Again, you don't have to, you don't have to really fill this in and turn it in. Um, I could look at it if you want me to. Uh, but you're not going to be submitting this. But let's say I was filling this out as a real sort of company. So I would replace here, you know, I'd put in my company's name, my fictional company, put my name in, and then the date. This document may change as time goes on, so you can have different versions of it as time goes on, as you engage in more of this analysis and, and, uh, and SEO and SEM. There's these sections that uh, I'll, I'll go over, and then you can think about how they can be filled out. Um, we have these aspects of your company, <coughs> its name, tagline, about us. The more detailed you are in these sections, the more it can help you in all of these concepts of SEO and SEM. Okay, so starting off with company name. The, the prompt here is, what is the name of your company? Why did you choose that name? Does it have a special meaning or story? So I could just write, you know, Victor's Bakery. And if I, if I was giving this as an assignment uh, and you were to turn it in like that you'd get a nice C plus by simply just putting your name well let, actually that's too high a C minus because this doesn't give you enough information to help yourself this tells me the name of your company great but as I have here also why did you choose that name is there a story behind it is there a special meaning uh, the example here I have is, okay, if I've got like a web design business, it's vic.co. And I'm writing here, and will be pronounced vic.co. Before I explained how the pronunciation of this company is, how would you have pronounced it? How did you pronounce it in your mind? Maybe you just said vic.co. But there's a dot there. It's vic.co. The pronunciation of that fictional company is vic.co. It comes from my name. So simply just writing the name of your business like that is absolutely minimal. I would be writing something more like Victor's Bakery, based on my grandfather's name, uh, and because of his passion for cooking that I remember as a child, etc., etc., etc. I would be writing the details about what is the name of the company. And it may be as simply as, well, that's just the name of myself. That's it. Nothing special. Victor's Cafe, that's it. It's a cafe. That's my name. That's fine. That would be something you'd put in the explanation if it were being turned in for an assignment grade. But all of this that we're going to talk about here, again, is related to creating the content for your SEO and SEM company profile, or uh, I mean company name, this will be content that you'll use in your about page. If you've got a website, it's got a home page, oftentimes an about page. Well, that about page, what am I going to put in that about page? If, if it's good to have an about page, I don't know what to put in there. These these various prompts in here are going to be part of the way to help you with that. This will be content that you use in your about page because there can be keywords that the search engines can find. 
again back to keywords. People are going to search at authentic Italian restaurant in Chula Vista. So my about page could have some of those terms, those sentences, those keywords, but I never would have thought about it. Um, I would have never thought about it if I didn't have it written down somewhere. So just for some real world examples, would anyone like to volunteer the name of their company and tell me a little bit about why is it called that? Any volunteers? 10 points? 10, myth ten <laughs> mythical points to earn? OK, that's OK. Yeah. yeah. If you're doing this thing, think about it. If you're dealing with a person that's branding their Name and their company. Do you do two different ones? Um, let me write that down over here. So let's say like this: What yes. if, what if I have my name and my company name? Yes. No, like they do business with their name by themselves, and then, then they have a company named Jack and Jill. Mm -hmm. Go up the hill. Yes. Uh, is it a water transportation company? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, so, um, but Jack has his, his own thing. So, I would say uh, if it relates, then promote or optimize both. So, what I mean there, okay, yeah, it's Jack, and um, he has the the Jack and Jill company. So, if it would make sense to have like Jack sort of like as an entity or a spokesperson also. Uh, sure, then you have two avenues right there, promotion of the business and promotion of the person. The person. Two different ones, right? Mm -hmm. I just don't <laughs> yeah, so uh, I often get it in terms of uh, like, let's say like a law firm and such. Uh, I want to help promote the law firm so that we get clients, but I'm also going to be self-promoting myself as the lawyer that wants to, wants to get hired. It doesn't work for everyone, however. Let's say I work for a big company like Qualcomm. Uh, well, it's not that important that I, that I promote myself. I'm, I'm working for, for Qualcomm and maybe like the contracts and such also go against it. So depending on, on, on your uniqueness, uh, it may be useful to promote yourself, like on LinkedIn and such, and the business, like on Facebook or websites. Yes? Um, actually, you're, you're giving me the tip here. I wonder if the name of my company isn't too focused on, I, Kindle Fine Art, I'm an artist, mm -hmm. and it's been Kindle Fine Art for years. And yet now I think, Maybe it would be better, or I'm asking, would it be better to maybe open it up to something that's not so generic or not so focused specifically on a single artist? Are, do you have other other artists that also? I, I'm teaching, but uh, not directly marketing with my, my business. Can we use you as an example? Can I talk about you as an example, just to get to Kendall like that? Uh, I and D E L. I and D E L. Oh, okay. okay. Uh, Kendall Fine Fine Arts. Arts. Fine. Okay. Uh, so Kendall Fine Art. Um, just to kind of get a little bit of an idea here, then. Okay, company name. So, just by having, if you hadn't told me anything about what you're starting to tell me. I would see Kindle and think right away about you know the Amazon Kindle devices um, where you where people would read books and such. Uh, it's but, a EL instead of yeah. Oh, uh, hmm, okay. Uh, I don't know if it's spelled the same as. Okay, so it, uh, uh, sorry if I'm dense. Kindle is that your your name, your last uh, name, and such? Okay. Yeah. Uh, okay, well, then that changes what I was going to say. Um, I thought it was Kindle, like the Amazon devices. Okay, so Kindle, fine art. It's your last name. Okay, so um, here, definitely, because you have your name and then uh, fine art, it does seem narrow that it's just yourself, that it's your fine art, your paintings, your photos, whatever it is that you do. It seems that it's very much you, which may not be good or bad. 
but as you were about to say, what else you know do you do here, or, or what? Uh, you say you work with other artists and such? Correct. Uh, teaching, uh, working with other artists, I mean all the local shows, um, uh, art blogs and so forth. Art shows, okay. Now the purpose then, um, do you uh, make, which of these might you, if I may ask, might you make more money off of, um, out of these three? Um, the, the purpose the teaching right now, but when the original sell, it's always the art. The um, the art shows. The purpose then of asking that is perhaps that's a way to determine the name or the direction of of, of the company name. Uh, if one is the one that's the more focus of, you could use that particular avenue to figure out if that's how I should change my name or keep the name or focus the name. If it varies, you know, when we sell something, it is the most valuable, but when we're not selling, the teaching is more valuable, then yes, it would be, it'd be um, the goal to try to figure out what is a more all-encompassing term, perhaps. Because I don't quite get a sense that there is teaching going on when I see Kindle Fine Art. Mm -hmm. I think more of the art shows. Um, I get somewhat of a sense of working with other artists, even though it's your name, I, it's not as much of a sense working with other artists. Uh, the big idea perhaps is the, is the art show that I'm getting just out of the name. Now the name is just one of the many factors of your company and promoting your company and such. But just to think about it in those different terms, this is why this activity here is let's lay it all out. Let's write about this and write about that and how does it guide us. Um, does that make sense? Does that so? So in this particular case, um, based on what the company does and it's more profitable or famous um, aspect, perhaps a company name in that vein would be better. Now, if we've got this company that we've had for years, and we've got all our business cards and all of that, it might not be economically uh, valuable to redo the marketing to focus on uh, these, uh, these other ideas. Because we can incorporate these other aspects, for example, moving here to the tagline. Uh, the tagline can be like an, an, an extension of the company name. I only have, let's say, an X amount of space for a company name. Well, I have more space. I can do, be more detailed in the tagline. Tagline here. Think of one sentence that helps people understand what your company is about. Think of some famous taglines and think, why do they stick? Why are they memorable? Your tagline could also be a concise statement of your company if its name is not immediately understandable. So if I've got a company like Victor's Bakery, it's pretty obvious that I sell baked goods. But if I had a very you know, modern and, 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 and hip uh, name of some of these companies that you see out there, um, like I just drove by on the 5 uh, near Barrio Logan area, and there's a building up there that on the three sides of the building, the name on the building is bread and salt. What are they about? What do they What do they sell? What's their product based on that name? Art. Baked art. goods. <laughs> Baked goods. You cheated because you know it's about it's about art. It's an art collective or something like that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Exactly. It's a gallery. So if you don't know that bread and salt. Okay, it's a restaurant. It's a high-end cool restaurant where you can get really cool breads and such, and artisanal food. You know, it's an art gallery, but you wouldn't have known that unless you, someone told you or you went walked into it. Well, maybe, I don't know if they have one. Does, does anyone know it? Does it have a tagline? Does it have like a subtitle? They don't want it. They don't want they it. They want it to be in the know. Uh, <laughs> esoteric. Yeah. Okay. So, 
bread and salt, not a restaurant. <laughs> so <laughs> you can't eat here. So uh, the tagline, if the name of your business is not readily apparent, and if you want it, uh, the tagline could be a way uh, for you to further explain what the business is about. So if I had Victor's Bakery, that's kind of obvious. But what I could do for a tagline is like, uh, you know, down home, uh, family, uh, you know, something like grandma's classic recipes. What's that? Uh, grand person's favorite recipe, sure. So, um, classic recipes from the old days, whatever, you know, where recipes from the old times, whatever. I'm just, uh, I'm just uh, thinking of, thinking of a tagline of, um, what further explains the business, if it's obvious from its name, this can also be obvious, or it can be, you know, like, uh, classic recipes uh, brought to you by kids, I don't know, just uh, putting further idea for that on a business where its tagline is obvious. Now, if the business is not obvious, here's an example, PMD Interactive. Based on just that name right there, if you don't know anything about it, uh, what might that company be about? Just by the name. Media. Media, perhaps. Anything else? What might the business be about? Just the interactive. What does interactive mean to you? Yeah. I think computers. Computers, yeah, sure. So something you can interact with. So it might not be very obvious for that business. What, what do they do? So here's where I would use the tagline as an example of to spell it out a little bit more. PMD Interactive, sub or tagline, um, modern web design for a modern company. Just making it up. Now it's obvious. OK, they do websites. Or if PMD Interactive is, you know, social media or uh, marketing and such, uh, you know, it could be something like uh, marketing your business the right way. Some sort of tagline. Now I'm kind of getting a sense of it. Okay, I can hire them for my business to do it the right way. Marketing. Okay, so now the name, which maybe doesn't make sense by itself, with the tagline, perhaps now is starting to make sense. That's what this part of the handout is about, to think about a tagline. If you don't have one, um, it could be useful for a couple of reasons to uh, further explain your business, or as another uh, little spot to include more keywords and SEO power. So, tagline can be used to explain your company if its title is too esoteric. Do you know what esoteric means? Esoteric means no one knows it. No one knows what it means. So, an esoteric name, PMD Interactive. Um, on the part about well, where did it come from? That's the name. Uh, that actually is the company that I work with, and it's based on the name. Uh, of the founder of, of the company. The initials are, are the, the, the PMD are her initials. And then the interactive was to get a sense, yes, of computers and technology. So the story behind that, you, you look at it as PMD Interactive, you don't quite know what it is, but there's a story behind it, and all of that verbiage is there in the About page, in the biography on the Facebook um, page, and then with the tagline further explaining, modern web design, modern web design business in San Diego, giving more detail in a tagline to explain the name if it needs it. Or if the name is obvious, to use it for more marketing. OK, 
keywords, etc. It's part of it because that's where you could put those keywords. Mm -hmm. So if I have, it, when I was saying earlier about searching for authentic Italian food in San Diego instead of Italian food, that's, that could be the tagline, right? Yeah. Victor's, Victor's Cucina or Victor's Cucina, um, authentic Italian food in San Diego. That's keywords that people could be searching for and could be literally the tagline. Yeah. yeah it helps to rank you better. All of these concepts uh, of what we're talking about in the class about taglines and keywords and all that, all of that, yes, will help us to rank better. Thank you. All right, so I had here, um, oh, let, me, let me make a, let me say about all of these things. Uh, if I was given, because uh, I've said before, last time, I teach here at this college, but I also teach at Southwestern College. And over there, those classes are unit classes. Those classes are classes that students pay for or get scholarships for and, uh, and take actual, um, do actual assignments and get grades. So in Southwestern College I teach this class, a variation of it, but there are assignments there that they have to do. This is an assignment that they would need to do. And in there they would have uh, usually a week after the lecture for this, a week to fill this out and turn it in. Now obviously the ones that that do it that same day and turn it in that day, they don't get the best grade because they didn't think about it. They just did it, but didn't think about it. Those that take a little longer to fill these things in a little bit more um, thoughtfully often get a better grade, and I can see it in the writing. So for us here, obviously it's not an assignment. I'm not asking you to fill it out and turn it in, but if you'd like to, I will look at it, sure, and give you an opinion. And what I mean also is that I might not be able to think of that right now. I don't know what to write here, I don't know what to write there, that's fine. You, you don't have a deadline for this class to do this. You might have a personal deadline to do this because I'm ready to launch my website soon, I need to get online, I need to make money, etc. So whatever your deadline is, is your deadline. But um, if you look at the document now and then uh, write some notes on it and then later on you look at it again a few days later or a week later and then you get more ideas as you learn more well that's good the document is helping you in the longer term tagline this and most marketing material often takes a while to figure out. And you might not have, you might not feel you have the ability, the, the skill to uh, create these marketing materials. That's fine. Uh, that's why there are people to hire. That's why there are tutorials to read. That's why there are books uh, at the library to check out uh, how to write marketing materials for small businesses you know do a search online get free articles you know from forbes.com and such uh, how do i how do i write uh, marketing material and i could get started with that do it yourself method in the beginning perhaps but then in the future think about uh, hiring a um, a business if if it's necessary for you so revisions will happen and are helpful. Think about, yes? When you're a business, if you're working for a client, you use this type of format? This is a variation, yes. This is one that we do for real clients. And our marketing person on the team uh, developed it from her education and skills and such. So it is a variation of what you can see. I don't think there's like a set standard. Right, but I mean something similar. Yes. Okay. Yeah, it's similar about figuring it all, figuring out all of these high-level things in whatever format or order it is. These are very, very common to do for any kind of business. Okay, so then we've got about us. Write a paragraph about your company. Who founded it? What is it about? When did you get the idea? Where was it founded? Why are you in business? 
How will you make the company a success? These answers will help fill out your biography on various sites. So this about us information, about us, more ways that you're figuring out long tail keyword strategy, more content to add to your website to help it get found. This is content to use on your profiles. So that's going to be the Twitter account that your business has, or the Facebook account, the LinkedIn, the Instagram, Snapchat, whatever, Pinterest, YouTube, whatever social networks you're going to have. Um, they're all going to ask for a little bit of about information. What is this company about? Twitter gives you 160 characters to write a little bit about your business. YouTube gives you like 5,000 characters to write about your business. Well, a lot of people just fill in like two sentences and then move on. That's a, sp that's a space there where you could be filling in with sentences and keywords about what people are searching for. If I've got a daycare center and I create a page on Facebook to promote my daycare center, Facebook gives me a bunch of spaces for you to write about the business, when was it founded, what is your mission statement, and all of that. Even more spaces for you to write content, keywords about what your business is to help you get found. And if you notice here, the prompt sort of guides you a little bit about, um, it's got the classic who, what, when, where, why, and how. Uh, those classic questions. Um, obviously, you don't have to fill in every one of these, but the more of these that you can articulate or, or write down, the more it can help you in the future. Okay, mission statement. Write something that lets potential customers know what's in it for them. Why would they hire you? For example, Vic.co exists to bring the most beautiful web design to the most discerning clients in Southern California. Our designs will make everyone take notice. So you may be seeing in some of these examples, like I said up here, a great company for your great website. You might be noticing, yes, this sort of marketing speak. The, the, these phrases and terms that are trying to elicit uh, an idea or, or a feeling. Uh, this is marketing. This is the part that not everyone, or I would say most people, don't possess. This is persuasion. Marketing, marketing and advertising, it's, it's a form of persuasion. If you really, really break it down cynically, all advertising is there to make you feel bad in some way. Oh, uh, you have bad breath? Here's our toothpaste. Oh, uh, you, you're, you're not at your ideal weight? Here's our weight loss product. Oh, uh, you are alone in life? Here is our social network for dating people. So all of this marketing, if you really break it down, is often trying to convince you of something that you're doing wrong or have something bad but here's our product or service to fix it so if, if we want to break it down that into such a base way uh, you know my business isn't about that Victor's Bakery I'm not trying to make my customers feel bad I want to give them baked goodies uh, so again it doesn't apply to everyone but if you kind of think about it that way um, oh this marketing speak uh, is all about that how to convince someone of something and we have to engage in some aspect of it ourselves because we have a business. We want to, uh, you know, if you break it down to the most basic, well, okay, I want to make money off of this. I have this passion, but I don't want to go broke. I want people to buy my things or hire me for X, Y, and Z. So I need to convince people. And that's the marketing aspect of it all. So for mission statement, mission statement, uh, a paragraph, 
of how you are going to convince people of something. To convince people of something. So on that Victor's Bakery, um, I would be writing about, let's say Victor's Bakery, dedicated to the ideal that everyone, everyone loves a warm cookie because of how we remember it from our childhood. We are our all natural ingredients um, our all natural ingredients bring to life your taste buds so obviously for a real client this would take much more effort and uh, thought uh, this is just off the top of my head, and the idea though is trying to evoke these ideas, okay, warm cookie, natural ingredients, taste buds, the memory of childhood. Ultimately, I'm just trying to sell, you know, sugary treats, but uh, we, we believe in our business and our ingredients, etc., and that, that's what I'm trying to figure out and get across in the mission statement. Let's see a tangible example here because these can these can range from very like straightforward to uh, like very prose like. If you'd like to do this, you can go to the web. We have a mission statement at this college. Uh, if we look at our at the college's website, San Diego Continuing Education, sdce.edu, we have a mission statement. Uh, we have a goal of what this institution is about. A mission statement for the bakery. What's the goal of the business? A mission statement for PMD Interactive. What's the goal of that business? If you go to our college here, they've got it down at the bottom here. Mission. San Diego Continuing Education commits to student success and community enrichment by providing accessible, equitable, and innovative quality education and support services to diverse adult learners in pursuit of lifelong learning training, career advancement, and pathways to college. Now, a uh, mission statement could be broken up into a sentence or two. It doesn't have to be a bit of a run-on sentence like that, perhaps. But it's got all of these keywords and buzzwords and concepts about education. We've got, OK, keyword of San Diego. So you wouldn't really be enrolling here if you lived in, uh, if you lived in New York. Um, you know, this is San Diego-based, San Diego County. Uh, we have here, uh, again, sort of like these keywords of subtle marketing, of convincing and such commits to. You know, this, we're committing to this. This is our all. This is our, our goal. We're committing to your success and to our community. We have these uh, modern terms about accessibility equity, equality, and such. Uh, we mentioned here adult learners. We, we are not an educational institute about uh, you know high school students. You have to be at least 18 to enroll, but you know you're an adult at that point. And uh, we are focused on adult learners, those that are trying to advance their skills or coming back to education in pursuit of lifelong learning. That's the key word nowadays, lifelong learning. Uh, we, we have a huge age range of, of people taking our classes, and we welcome everyone that hasn't, you know, uh, we take people in that haven't been uh, in, in school for, for decades. This is the first time in years that I've been back to school, or people that are often learning and wanting to keep updating their skills lifelong. We offer training classes and career advancement. That's a key word there. 
Um, I'm tired of my job at the moment. I need to advance my skills. Uh, people tell me all the time when they take these classes, they say, I never knew, I drove by this place all the time, but I never knew here you were giving out so many free classes. I'm going to tell my friends. And so, advancement, pathways to college, etc. We offer all of these things. This could have been condensed down to San Diego Continuing Education Mission, free classes, period. But we've got all of this terminology and keywords that could be found and terms that could resonate with people. This is a very good marketing, very good marketing spiel, a very good mission statement. So, Victor, yes. It's interesting because in this mission, there's no mention free classes, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. How people find out this website and knows about free, free classes, you know? The main goal of it isn't that the classes are free. It's the main goal is that there are many high quality classes. It might be better that people, you know, some people might say, well, I, I, you should make it more obvious that they're free classes. And maybe, yes, maybe that might be useful for, for a lot of people. But uh, it seems that what works is that when we get people to know about these classes, they're hooked and they keep coming back and they keep telling more people and it kind of grows. So maybe in the beginning it was more important to let people know right away these are free classes. But as our student body ha has grown over the decades about kind of a bit of word of mouth and uh, it seems to be working this way. Yeah, I think people come here organically, you know? <laughs> I think so, yeah. We mail, we mail out the catalogs and such, and people flip through the catalog, and then they see no fee, and they're like, wow, no fee. I see yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Exactly, what's outside? Perfect, perfect. Yes. Thank you. Yes. I was just going to say that that's how I found out about it originally. It was like, this is the answer we have. But for some reason, yeah, that's very true. Um, this is this is the the tightrope that we have to walk with marketing because some terms have some meanings to some people, and uh, yeah, free for some might be a positive connotation, and for others not so positive. So that's the complication of trying to write something to appeal to everyone. Yeah. Kind of relates back to your bread and salt. I mean, it's kind of esoteric in the sense nobody really knows it's free. And in a way, that's kind of the way they want it. Yeah. Yeah. Um their particular mission statement or their goals, I mean, even if it's not articulated, they have some goals that came about organically, even if it's not written down. And that was one of their goals, to be a little bit of a, you know, underground or maybe not... Um, Exclusive, but just like those in the know. Yeah, not in your face. Like not in your face, even though it's the tallest building in that area. <laughs> and that, that psychology is really an uh, interesting subject, uh, particularly in the arts, because the first thing I hear from most people is, oh, do you sell your art? Yeah. How do you make a living on that? First, <laughs> it's the most common thing people say. And then your art is valued on, oh, did you sell that for $10,000? Mm -hmm. Did you sell that for twenty dollars Oh, wow. Oh, it must be. Insane. But the art is still in the art. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't change. It changes in perception. Mm -hmm. But the art itself is still inherently what, we, what it's always been. Yeah. And it's really fascinating to watch that psychology, especially with wealthy people, because if you don't put prices at a certain level, mm -hmm. they they won't even look at it. Mm -hmm. And they not only look at it, but even when they buy it, they equate value with how much did they spend. Yeah, like... Or quality with how much they spend. Yeah, that's... Um, you can also equate that with, like, cell phones. I look at a cell phone that costs $99, versus one that costs $799. I'm like, obviously the $799 is better. Not really. It could be the technology is the same, but the marketing budget or whatever of one of the companies convinces you that $799 is the right price for a good phone. So yeah, it is really interesting, the psychology of how we equate value to things. And maybe even like in the world of art, long-term value. Often it's an investment. 
I would say. It's a thing to enjoy, of course, but it's an investment in that, well, I got it for this value at this moment, I'm going to enjoy it, and then when I pass it down to my heirs, it might even be more valuable. Right. Yeah, and the story is the most important part. The story, exactly. All of this marketing about what is the, what is the story behind that painting or in our ways here, our business. What is our business? Uh, getting back to this right here, that reminds me to uh, mention here about this, why would they hire you? Uh, let's talk a little bit about this. Why? Mission statement. Um, suddenly blanked on it. It's got a longer name. Um, the psychology of why? Well, I'll look it up right now. But um, the why. Um, what makes your business unique? Why would someone pick you versus the competition? It's yet another restaurant, yet another lawyer, yet another real estate agent, yet another daycare. So all of this seems a little bit of left field of SEO, especially if you've kind of read about it a little bit yourself. It's about keywords and putting it on your heading number one and such. Yes, but it's also about uh, the content. So uh, if we've got, if we're going to focus on a mission statement about what, what you are about, it's not just navel gazing, what's your mission statement? It's about how uh, can you help someone or what's in it for them or uh, what stands out about you. We saw the mission statement here for uh, San Diego Continuing Ed, you know, dedicated to student success, community enrichment, equitable, diverse. Uh, we have training and career advancement. Well, this is what's in it for you. Yeah, it's free classes, but I, at the moment, need career advan advancement. That's why I'm going to go there. I believe in accessibility and equality and such. So they believe in it too. I will uh, patronize them. Uh, so what's what's in it for for the for the company how can you convince them the why of it let's see over here an example um, let's see if we can um, I haven't looked at it recently let's see just randomly nike.com I want to try to find their mission statement uh, on their website I haven't looked at it so we'll see if we can find it um, okay shoes uh, basketballs. Okay, so let's see down here. About Nike. News, career, converse, investor, sustainable, site feedback, become a member, find a store, contact. Um, sometimes they put this in investors section. Terms and conditions, Nike mission statement. Okay, I, I couldn't find it directly. I'm sure it's somewhere on their site, but I went to go do a search about it. Okay, it's in the get help section, apparently. Nike mission statement. Nike's mission statement is to bring inspiration and innovation to every athlete in the world, aka to sell you shoes but they wrote it in a way that is very lofty and inspiration and innovation to every athlete in the world. Now, what's, there's, an, there's an asterisk right here for some reason. To every athlete? Interesting. Now, where are they defining that asterisk? The legendary University of Oregon track and field coach and Nike co-founder Bill Bowerman said, if you have a body, you are an athlete. Bowerman was a teacher who showed athletes the secrets to achievement. Nike invites you to experience all innovation and inspiration inspiring Nike products. So ultimately, if you break it down very cynically, this is a company that sells you shoes. Well, athletic apparel and such. But their mission statement, to bring inspiration and innovation to every athlete in the world. And this is the part of why. What's another shoe? What's another athletic shoe company we might compare them with? Adidas. Okay, let's try this. Adidas mission statement.
a mission statement. The Adidas Group strives to be the global leader in the sporting goods industry with brands built on a passion for sports and a sporting lifestyle to sell you shoes. So same thing here about global leader. We want to be the best in the world. Um, we have a passion for sports, just like you. You have a sporty lifestyle. We do too. So that's what these mission statements are trying to convince you about why uh, you would pick them versus the competition. Yes? No, it can be as much as you want. Um, these have been, these two examples are pretty short, and then the one of the college is a little longer. So it can be a sentence, a paragraph, it can be as much as you want. Uh, the reason why we might want it longer is because we can create more keywords to put on our website to help us get found. A reason to put it shorter is because it, it works well on a business card or, you know, for quick distribution of it. So we'll do one more in a completely different space. Nintendo mission statement. Uh, Nintendo of America's corporate mission and philosophy. At Nintendo, we are proud to be working for the leading company in the industry. We are strongly committed to producing and marketing the best products and support services available. We believe it is essential to not only provide products of the highest quality, but to treat every customer with attention, etc. Huh. This doesn't sound at all like about, we sell video games. So it's just interesting to see how the different companies do their mission statement. The whole point of it, though, is just to uh, create content. A couple more, then we'll um, take a break. Yeah. Is there a reason why they, it seems like they buried that mission statement in, in these websites? Like, if you know, it's not really the rest of the website, it's just the mission statement. These particular, these particular three companies, yeah, it was a little buried in there somewhere. Our college, we had it right at the front. I, I think it depends on the space. It depends on the company and its industry. Because already these companies are so big, it doesn't even matter. You know, Nike, Nintendo, Adidas have been around decades. So it, do, it almost doesn't even matter what their, what, their statement what their statement is. They're already so big and entrenched. And a lot of times it's way over hidden in the investor section where the investor is trying to decide, I'm going to invest $10,000. Should I put it in Nike or Adidas? Should I put it in Nintendo or Sony? So it would be more valuable to them. For perhaps us to have a smaller company, we might want to put it much more on front because we're not so established and entrenched and we need to get every customer that we can. Values. What are some keywords that your company believes in? For example, orderliness, teamwork, discipline, efficiency, creativity, tolerance, etc. And I've got a, a link there that you can follow to check out because this again helps you write some of these previous things, uh, the mission statement, tagline, etc. And figuring out these keywords can then help you when you start to create some of this other content. For example, uh, let me let me say uh, Twitter. So key. Um, uh, values, keywords that create feelings about your company or brand, which you can use, for example, as hashtags on social media. If you take the social media class, I talk about hashtags, but basically hashtags are uh, keywords uh, on a social media post like on Twitter, Facebook, Google Plus that are active links that people can search for that are all linked together. So hashtags active links of topics so to speak of what your post is. Uh, so there's the hashtag. Uh, there's a movie coming out. Um, or there's um, uh, uh, there's a product and it's got a hashtag and every and everyone's encouraged take a selfie and use this hashtag so all of the people that are 
engaged in that piece of social media are using that hashtag, they're all linked together. They can find each other. They can communicate with each other. Uh, they can create a community. Um, here's one that I just saw. Uh, does any, anyone know of Mad Magazine? Mad Magazine, it's the classic um, humor publication founded in 1952. They just, and they've been publishing since 1952. They just rebooted to issue number one last month. And they've got the hashtag New Mad. I think it's New Mad Magazine. So they're saying, uh, you know, take a picture with the new issue of Mad and, and, and post it, and don't forget to hashtag it New Mad Magazine. Uh, so, uh, you know, I, most of us have probably heard of it, probably read it a bit and such. I remember reading it in the 80s, and then I got a subscription in the early 2000s for a while. I haven't read it in a while, but then I was at Barnes & Noble, and I saw it on the shelf, and it said Mad Magazine number one. I'm like, wow, number one? So I, I got convinced, and I bought it. And it was very funny, still, still funny. And then when I went through it, it's very modern nowadays, and it's got you know social media and hashtags. Their Twitter account is very active. They put funny things every day, like five funny things every day. And uh, a, a yearly subscription is like $16 or something. So um, that, that has a mission statement. Mad Magazine has a mission statement, and uh, it's trying ultimately... Yeah, they want to put out humor and such, but they want you to buy the magazine. They want you to get the subscription, either digitally or real. You can buy a digital subscription to Mad Magazine. And they're trying to create community and all of that. And their values are humor, irreverence, parody, whatever. Um, you know, nonconformity, whatever they, they've chosen. Let's see if we can find that, actually, just for, just for fun. Mad Magazine mission statement. Yeah. He's not worried at all. Mad Magazine mission statement. Might be in there somewhere. So, um, Welcome to the new mad, latest stories. Um, somewhere I'm sure it's going to say, but um, somewhere. So they're part of the larger entity. They um, they're part of DC Comics actually, uh, and then DC Comics is part of Warner Brothers. So probably somewhere in the maybe the, the Warner Brothers corporate headquarters website it'll be there or something but they've all got um, some sort of statement um, just for fun yeah that's the first issue right there um, welcome to the all new somewhat familiar mad so okay well here's not exactly a mission statement but right here they're talking about uh, so after 550 issues, they rebooted to number one. They were New York-based since the 50s, and now they moved over to California, and they started issue number one last month. And uh, they got some new people running things and such also, but still a lot of classic artists. Um, and so... Um, yeah, they, they always had a presence and... Um, it inspired generations of creativity and parody. <laughs> so you can go look on that link right there to find more examples of values and such, and they can be uh, things that you can write in the mission statement or on your home page or on your tweets and such. We'll see how later. So for values, uh, just write keywords. Yeah, this is fine for this one, just, just keywords. Uh, which, can then, which can then cause inspiration for other things. Oh. Personality. Think of your company as a person. How would he or she communicate? How would he or she behave? For example, Vic.co's communication is spontaneous and friendly. Vic.co is happy to talk to new clients and share the latest in web design. This really, really depends on your business. This personality, the communication and such. Um, how are you, are you writing your... Your, your text, personality, informs your speech in 
writing and communication. Slang, proper words, uh, code switching, very fancy term there, but basically how do you communicate with one group versus communicating with another group? Code switching. So uh, this is if I had a you know, if I were a lawyer and I'm on Facebook and all of that, and I'm communicating on Facebook with slang and contractions and a very like street level communication, are you going to trust me to be your lawyer? Maybe if that's my clientele. <laughs> on the opposite, what if I have very like proper language and kind of like stoic communication, and I'm a daycare center. Am I going to want my kids to be at your daycare center where you seem like very stuck up and, uh, and harsh and such? So the personality of how you're writing is going to depend on the group you're marketing to, your, your demographic. There's no right or wrong answer here, except that uh, once you figure out your target audience, your demographic, your personality of how you're going to write your tweets or write your mission statement and all of that depends on your target audience. Depends on target audience. Your target audience will see you as inauthentic or out of touch if you're communicating them to them in the wrong way. So this is just this is authenticity. Authenticity. Lastly, we have the fundamentals. This one's very easy. List the company address, website, email, social media of your of your business. You can also list profiles and accounts that you don't have that you want to add in the future. So I would just simply write the address, the real world address of the business if I have one. If I'm a web designer and I work out of my home office, I'm not going to put my home's address here, of course. But maybe I have a PO box, or I have the website, uh, or I have a Facebook and, and a Twitter. And maybe I make a note here that I want to create an Instagram, I want to set up a Snapchat. So just basic list of your online um, addresses and such. So all of this would be something that we would do and have done for real clients, writing it all down. We get the, we get the feedback from the clients about, wow, this was so helpful for me and my business to help me understand my own business. We need it, of course, if we get hired to understand their business to help promote it. But it's often uh, been told to us by the clients that this is helpful for them, that they kind of like actually wrote it down. I had a business and I have an idea and I want to make money, but I'm just like going day to day to make it a success but then putting it down here on paper and actually thinking about it helps me uh, see that what my goals are and and how I can get to them you can fill it out at any point and have me check it out if you'd like me to or not you can keep it for yourself if you do fill it out I would recommend to also have a copy of it an original one without changes there was one that I was writing on, and then there was a copy that I made. In case I want to go back and start over, I get different ideas, or I start a new business. You, I can, of course, send, it, send you a new copy of it if you need one in the future, but if you've got your own copy uh, as a backup, you can use it yourself that way. So kind of a lot of, of lofty ideas and such, uh, but we will be applying them more directly as the class goes on. But questions on the, on the handout up to this point? Yeah. It's often better to sit down with them and talk about all of these things because on the person by themselves, it might seem like I, I don't even know how to answer this question. And then if we're there to talk to them and guide them and the, how I'm talking about it and saying, well, a tagline is not just... Uh, you know, a little quick sentence that explains your business. It's it's this and it's that, and uh, it's much better to guide the client, sit down with them, and guide them. If I know what it is, I can then guide them to help them write the best thing. 
other questions? All right, uh, let's take our first break. It's 10.50. We'll take a break until 11, and, and then we'll, we'll be back.